In this video, I'm going to go through a couple of work rate problems. The problem on the screen at the moment is not a work rate problem, but I'm going to use it to illustrate why work rate problems can often be confusing. So this problem is just about uh, speed and distance and time. Now we're used to thinking about rates of change, such as speed, kilometers per hour, things like that. And work rate problems, we don't have rates that we're used to thinking about. So anyways, let's get straight into this problem and then I'll show you why I'm doing this one in particular. So this problem says it takes 1.5 hours for John to travel one kilometer. John is a snail, that's why he's going so slow. Tim can travel one kilometer in two hours. Tim is also a snail and Tim's traveling even slower than John, clearly. Um, and actually, if they were snails, then they're pretty, pretty fit snails to travel that far in that amount of time. Anyways, the question says, if they start at the same time, how long will it take John and Tim to travel one kilometer all together? Hopefully you're thinking that you want the speed in terms of kilometers per hour for each one. So if John travels 1.5 hours in one kilometer, what's his speed? Well, if we break this time up into thirds, so if he's traveled 1.5 hours, this could be thought of as uh, 30 minute blocks. So 30 minutes plus 30 minutes, minutes plus 30 minutes. And so we want the speed in terms of kilometers per hour. So how far would he travel in one hour? So two of those 30 minute blocks, well, that would be two thirds of his original distance, right? So this is going to be two thirds of a kilometer. So for John, we have a speed of two thirds kilometers per hour. Okay, for Tim, his speed is a little bit easier. He travels one kilometer in two hours. How many kilometers would he travel in one hour? That's going to be half a kilometer, half a kilometer per hour. Okay, so we have the speeds of these super fit snails. And now we're wondering, well, how long would it take for them both to travel one kilometer all together? So they start at the same time and they travel, travel, travel until they have all together, both of them traveled one kilometer. Now, J John is going to cover more distance than Tim, but they're going to travel for the same amount of time, right? They're both going to stop once their collective distance equals one kilometer. So for this, we can think of this formula, distance equals speed times time. So John's distance is going to be his speed times the time that he's traveling for. Tim's distance is going to be his speed times the time he's traveling for. And if we add these distances together, we'll have the total distance they've covered. In this case, we know it needs to equal one kilometer. So we could say that John's distance is his speed times the time he's traveled. Let's call that T. Adding Tim's distance, which will be his speed times the time that he's traveled for. Now we know in this case, they are going to be traveling for the same amount of time. So this is also going to be multiplied by T, the time that Tim has traveled for. And their distances added together need to equal one, one kilometer. So I hope you followed my logic so far because now we've ended up with an equation that we can actually solve for T. Um, so we need to add these fractions together, two thirds plus a half, two thirds plus a half. You can multiply this one by two. This will be four over six plus Multiply this one by three, this will be three over six. This equals four plus three is seven, seven over six. So adding these two fractions together, we get seven over six T equal to one. And then solving for T then we'd multiply by six, divide by seven, T is going to be six on seven hours, which is approximately approximately 51 minutes. But the question doesn't ask you to write it in terms of any particular units. So six on seven hours or 51 minutes would be fine there for a final answer. So I'm hoping that is a question that is slightly more intuitive to answer because you're thinking of speed and distance and we know distance is speed times time. So now I want to look at a pretty much identical work rate problem 
This problem says it takes 1.5 hours for John to mow the lawn. Tim can mow the same lawn in two hours. How long will it take John and Tim working together to mow the lawn? So hopefully you can see these are pretty much identical problems. But in this case, we're not talking about distance and time. We're talking about lawns. And that's where I think the confusion can come in with work rate problems because it's not a typical uh, rate that you're used to. It's not kilometers per hour or minutes per second. So in this case, however, we can still use the exactly the same logic. So the rate that John can cut the lawn, his rate is two thirds of a lawn. Sorry, two thirds, not two twos. Two thirds of a lawn per hour. From our previous question, right? We did, we've already done that working for Tim. His rate is a half a lawn per hour. And if we want the amount of lawn they cut to equal one, right, the total lawn, we can do, uh, we can use this formula, right? Before we said distance equals speed times time. In this case, we're talking about lawns. The amount of lawn they cut is going to be their rate times the amount of time they're cutting the lawn for. The same logic but it's not a formula that we typically think of. The amount of lawn you cut is the lawn rate times the time you're cutting the lawn for. However, the logic is still gonna work here. So the amount of lawn that John cuts is two thirds times the time he's cutting the lawn plus the amount of lawn that Tim cuts is his rate times the time he's cutting the lawn for. This needs to equal one lawn in total. And we've already worked out this equation as well. We found T to equal six on seven hours or approximately 51 minutes. Okay, so the reason I went through this problem, which is not a work rate problem essentially, is to show that often the confusion comes in with work rate problems because the rates that we're thinking about, lawns per hour or, you know, it might be boxes per day. It's the things that you're making that are not typical. We're not used to thinking about rates in that way. So again, I'm hoping that you had a slightly more intuitive understanding of this question and that will help you understand how I'm solving this problem down here. Okay, one more problem that I'm going to go through. Problem two, it says it takes six hours for pump A used alone to fill a tank of water. Pump B used alone takes eight hours to fill the same tank. We want to use three pumps A, B, and another pump C to fill the tank in two hours. What should be the rate of pump C? How long would it take pump C used alone to fill the tank? Okay, so pump A, it takes six hours to fill the tank. So its rate would be, well, how much of the tank would it fill in one hour? It would fill a sixth of the tank. So we've got a sixth, a sixth of whatever units we're measuring the tank in, so units cubed per hour. For pump B, it fills the tank in eight hours. I'm going to convert this to a rate. This would be one eighth of the tank. I could actually write tank here, so maybe that would be easier. One eighth of the tank per hour. I'll change this one to tank as well. And for pump C, we don't know how long it would take. So let's say it takes C X hours. Its rate would be one on X tanks per hour. Okay, now we want to come up with an equation similarly to how I solved problem one. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to fill up the tank. And if I was just using pump A, it'd take me six hours. If I was just using pump B, it'd take me eight hours. If I was just using pump C, it would take me X hours. But I want to use all three and I want it to take two hours. So we have the rate for pump A, that's a sixth. If we multiply that by the time we're pumping for, that will give me how much of the water I pump with pump A. Add on the amount of water we pump with pump B, that would be its rate times two and then add on the amount we pump with pump C. That would be its rate, one on X times two. So that's two on X. And this will give me one full tank of water. Simplifying this then, 
I have two on six, which I could write as a third, two on eight, which I can write as a quarter, and two on x, which I'll leave as is. This equals one. A third plus a quarter, I need to work that out. I'll make some notes over here. A third plus a quarter, multiply this one by four, this will be four on 12. Multiply this one by three, this will be three on 12. This equals seven on 12. So these two fractions simplify to seven on 12 plus two on x equal to one. Then one take seven on 12. That leaves you with the remainder of five on 12. So two on x equals five on 12. And now you need to be able to rearrange this in terms of x. If you're used to working with algebraic fractions, you'll be confident with this. If you're not, it might take you a minute, but here you can cross multiply. So 12 times two, and then five times x, we would have five x equal to 24, and then x equal to 24 on five. And remember x was the number of hours it takes pump C to fill the tank. Remember that was the question. What rate, what should be the rate of pump C and how long would it take pump C to fill the tank? Essentially we've answered both of those. So we could leave that as is, so 24 on five hours, or if you want to convert that to a fraction, sorry, a decimal, if you want to convert that to a decimal, that would be 4.8 hours. Okay, and so then the rate would be one on 4.8 hours as a fraction of the tank per hour. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully that gives you some strategies to approach work rate problems. The other thing I wanna point out is you can think of these problems in terms of a graph. So if you are trying to graph these rates, uh, pump A, you would have a straight line because it's always pumping at the same rate. Uh, this would be, this would have a gradient of a sixth. Pump B would have slightly less of a gradient because it has a slower rate and pump C was the fastest one. So this would be our, our graph here. And if we're trying to work out how long it takes to fill the tank, they're starting at the same time and they're finishing at the same time. So this axis here would be time. In order to solve this, I have a set time they're all pumping for. So that would be, let's just call that T1. And all of these values over here, which is the amount of water they pump, they all need to add up to the total uh, amount of water in the tank. So in this case, we essentially said they all need to add up to one, right? Because the rate was in tanks per hour. So this was amount of tanks. So that's another way to think about this. You can think about that in terms of a graph if that helps you to make sense of it. Again, I do believe myself that work rate problems can be confusing because they are not the types of rates we typically used to think of, such as speed, distance, time. They're often, you know, lawns per hour or tanks per hour, which gets confusing. All right, hopefully you found this useful. Please leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.